All right. We're here for our Tuesday media availability with Coach Sermon. As always, just let me know in the chat you have a question, and we'll go ahead and get started with uh, Jim McGill. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, Peter. Uh, you guys held Davis to 13. Um, there were two drives that could have turned into points, obviously. You had the nice pick by Irby that prevented a touchdown, and then you had the goal line stand with where you, you stopped him inside the 10. So it could have obviously been a, a different game. How do you evaluate – things like that and your overall assessment of how the defense did. That goes, uh, you know, it's a big part of it, Jim, is, uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time talking about, uh, you know, takeaways, red zone uh, efficiency. So those are, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, really every time they have the opportunity to, to start a drive, you know, we, we have to start um, thinking about how we're going to factor in that what's, what's successful uh, completion with this drive. And, you know, uh, we had four, I think we had five times they went for it on fourth down, which is a, a pretty aggressive day uh, as an offense. Um, so that's that's as many fourth down opportunities I've, I think we've had in a few years here. Uh, but, you know, the, the the tale of last season, you know, that was similar to the way our defense performed as well. It was uh, some opportunistic fourth down stops. Um, it was takeaways in the red zone. So, uh, you know, the, the, the length of the drive, you know, sometimes you get in a little bit of a, of a war of attrition there, and, and uh, I'm glad the guys made some plays uh, at the right moments. And what are a few of the things that you um, look to improve on this week, and what are a few of the things that you liked about what the defense did? I think the, from the first to the second game, there's going to be a tremendous amount of improvement. Where we have identified where we want to improve is we have to play faster and play with more physicality. Those are the, the two areas that uh, at the conclusion of the game and then preparing for uh, what we're doing uh, yesterday in our in our defensive unit meeting. Those are the areas of emphasis uh, that I presented to the defense uh, as a whole. There's always going to be subsets of that positionally, but that's that's the, the areas of improvement. The things I thought we did pretty well is uh, pre snap communication. Uh, UC Davis. Um, you know, watching the game. And, and as you guys all watched the game, there were a significant amount of moving parts. Uh, there were some uh, what we call dead formations. There were some wildcat formations. And I thought the guys did a nice job of communicating uh, what we were trying to get accomplished. Uh, we need to tackle better. And, you know, I think that's going to be probably something I say every single week. Uh, tackling in space in college football is, is the, the biggest issue that we all have. Thanks. Okay, we'll go to Jeff Ferrato. Go ahead, Jeff. Peter, I asked uh, Justin what he thought about your pass rush, your pressure, and his response a little bit was, well, he thought it was okay, but, but he mostly thought that you guys didn't put yourself in enough positions to, to rush the pass or too many third and shorts, fourth and shorts. What do you need to do better on first and second down to, to get in the favorable third, third and long situations? A lot of people want to talk about the third down distance like you're saying, Jeff, but uh, so much of that is predicated on exactly what you're referring to is, is how you're playing on first and second down. Uh, first and 10, second and six, third and two is not the rhythm uh, of being able to have opportunities of rushing the quarterback. So we need to do a better job uh, in the run game. There were a few runs, in my opinion, that, that bled. Uh, we fit them correctly. Uh, the, the ball fell forward. So we have to continue a saying we say around here is we have to value the yard. You know, uh, it's a significant difference between second and nine and second and seven. And those are those yards that once the pile, once we fit it, we need to see the, the, the ball carrier going backwards, not bleeding forward on us. So first and second down will continue to be an emphasis on how we finish, how we tackle. Uh, similar to what, you know, I just referred to is, is everybody's tackling in space in college football. You know, those are the, the the hidden the hidden yards when you conceptually space it and you leverage the ball and yet the ball falls forward for an additional one to three yards. And that's what really gets behind the sticks as a play caller. And Xavier Carlton, I think, had one and a half of your two sacks. How did, how did you assess how he played in his first game with you guys? I thought Xavier had uh, those two rushes. Uh, were good rushes. You know, the one uh, between Jernigan and himself, uh, Miles made a nice inside move. Uh, we got a little more of a traditional uh, drop on that particular one. I thought Miles did a nice job of, of, of taking the space that the right tackle uh, gave him. And then Xavier on the one down 
uh, on the backed up coming out, I thought, you know, it really kind of showcased his ability with his length, uh, you know, from the sideline. It looked like go-go gadget arms uh, to be able to, to grab the back of the, uh, the jersey of the, the quarterback. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Jesse Stewart from Rivals. Um, watching the film for UNLV, is there anything that, like, sticks out to you specifically about what they do well, what they maybe don't do so well, and, like, how they might try to attack you guys in particular? The style of play, uh, what we're going to see is going to be uh, pistol run. You know, pistol run is something that, uh, you know, uh, Marcus was doing at Oregon, you know, with uh, Crystal Ball, um, you know, quite a bit. And he has taken it uh, to UNLV as well. So uh, that is going to be a more of a vertical downhill run game that's going to put uh, it's a it's a different insertion point and a different tempo. Uh, for the linebackers to, to see it. Most all the college offenses uh, are built out of offset backs, which the, the tempo of it, the angles of the approach and angle of some of the blocks uh, and the, the ability to anticipate the flow of the ball is significantly better with an offset back. Uh, pistol is, uh, you know, can go both ways. Typically there's not a, a huge pre-snap indication of where the flow might go. Uh, the challenges of pistol sometimes people will say it's it's uh, protection. You know the depth of the back being behind the quarterback is not always conducive uh, for some of the the protection issues that that running backs typically find themselves in the uh, uh, you know five or six or seven man protections. Uh, but the the depth of the back and the the tempo of the run game is going to be a great challenge for us on defense. Uh, I thought the quarterback was extremely uh, Brumfield was extremely. Uh, Efficient. I think he was 21 to 25, if my uh, my memory serves me correct. Uh, he, he really threw the ball uh, very accurately, and it looks like the ball uh, is really spinning out of his hands. I mean, he, he was decisive with his throws. Uh, I thought did a nice job of putting it on the body of the receiver. So, uh, you know, it was, it, was a, it was an impressive showing of throwing the football for him and the pistol run game. So we have, we have a big challenge on, on uh, playing that style of offense. Uh, you mentioned that it's a challenge for the back and some protection issues. You guys, obviously, without going into too much detail, uh, uh, have a plan on how to manipulate that back in, and get yourself into some favorable like pass pro sets where you can kind of like manipulate uh, your one-on-one -on -one opportunities. You know, there's there's some thoughts on, you know, there's some big picture thoughts on uh, not necessarily what we do, but just uh, some of the, the how, to, how to attack pistol um, run game in the, um, in the pass opportunities and, and rushing the quarterback there uh, they do they're going to move the quarterback or the excuse me the running back around enough they're going to have some soft offset uh, formations where it's a little more conducive for him getting out in the in the routes uh, and getting to six and seven man pros uh, a little bit easier but uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll play it you know with some of our some of our uh, our calls and, and we'll see what we can do with uh, with the pistol sweet thank you okay we'll go back to Jeff Frada. Yeah, I wondered, Peter, what your impressions were of um, Ricky White, the uh, wideout who he had a big game against Idaho State. He's a former Michigan State guy who was effective at times for them. What do you see when you watch him? He's pretty talented. Yeah, he got behind the defense a few times, you know, and and uh, once he got behind it, no one was, uh, you know, no one was fast enough to run him down. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really the you know, they got a couple guys that can go. Uh, and then Brumfield going 21 to 25 and really pushing the ball uh, down the field uh, effectively. Uh, the intermediate route, some of the seven cuts, uh, you know, some of those routes that that uh, you don't see players that, that can make those throws. Uh, I thought they were very impressive throwing the football. How did your son play on Saturday? Um, I thought the, the Will linebackers between him and Nate, uh, I thought they they played with uh, good production. I think I had uh, that that uh, position. I think about I think I had about thirteen about thirteen tackles between the two of them. So I think you know from uh, from the amount of reps that they had, the thirteen tackles and the pass breakup. I thought the production was uh, where it needs to be. Uh, he did some things that uh, I thought were really positive. I thought he I thought Jack tackled well, um, and you know he was uh, I think he fit some of the run games. Um, uh, really well for that for that position. The Nate came in, and I think he had three or four tackles, and and uh, you know both of those guys are, are valuable players for us, and we'll continue uh, getting reps. 
Thank you. Okay, we go to Jim McGill. Hey, Coach, can you talk a little bit about what happened on that that long run for the touchdown? Yeah, so we spaced it. Um, you know, we had uh, it was a it was a wind it was a wind play that uh, Cali from Talon Castles came back. Uh, our G got bumped, so our two I um, got overtaken on the on the guard center combination block and ended up finding uh, he ended up being behind the center. Uh, we played it as as wind inside zone and our and our will linebacker uh, did the way I I've, I've coached him to do. And the problem was was the the two ended up behind the adjacent um, lineman. So we had uh, some gap spacing issues be, between the, the corner in the fit and the G. And then unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get the ball on the ground once it spit. That's exactly what I thought happened too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously UNLV was highly impacted by the transfer portal. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamic of how that can change a team from year to year? Obviously you guys, dipped into the portal for some real important pieces too. I think it's, it's going to significantly change uh, everybody's roster. Uh, the ability uh, to find players that, that can help immediately. Um, and it's the, the ability of some of the players that, that aren't exactly happy with maybe where they're at on the depth chart uh, for them to be able to find new homes as well. So I, so I think you're going to see guys that, that maybe have, uh, they feel have outkicked their coverage and they can, they can bump up uh, to another level potentially. Uh, and then you see the guys that, that maybe uh, the evaluators maybe outkick their coverage and, and they, need to, they need to find a more appropriate level for them. So uh, I, I think the, the, the portal is going to continue. Um, I don't think it's going to wreak havoc. I think it's going to uh, bring a balance of the appropriate level for all these players. Uh, to find a good college home. And I, and I hope that, that, you know, it's used responsibly for, for all the players that, that do dip into it. And hopefully they, they feel they've been mindful with what their decision is and they're being diligent on identifying what's the appropriate fit for them on their next stop. Do you have much of a sense for how much the portal improved UNLV or did you not really see much of their film from last year? I haven't had a significant amount uh, of, you know, I, I, I watch the formations and, and I, you know, watch the kind of the concepts. I don't go through a lot of the production of, of what has left and then what with only one game, um, you know, it's not a it's not a big part of, of what I'm looking at. Yeah, thanks. OK, anybody with a final question for coach? Give you another couple of seconds here. All right. See you none, coach. We're good to go. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Make sure you guys stay hydrated. It's hot out here. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure, you too. See ya.